How do you get your head around the fretboard with drop D tuning? And what's the cool stuff you can do with it? So in today's fretboard session, we are in drop D. Alright, cool. So drop D is a really cool tuning and I think of it as like the first, for most people, exposure that you get to alternate tunings on the guitar. And I think probably my first song I ever learned was actually in drop D. I learned some Rage Against the Machine tunes, all in drop D. That's as much as I'm going to play because copyright infringement. So that's it. So drop D is really interesting. It's fantastic sounding guitar, but sometimes as with all tunings, how do you think about the fretboard in those alternate tunings? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can really get a handle over your fretboard and what to think about, what to worry about, and what to not worry about. So the first thing, let's state the obvious, is the sixth string has gone down a tone. So this one's tuned to a D note instead of an E note. So we now have a different set of shapes on the guitar and we have a different set of possibilities. So I'm going to take you through some options and ways that you can think about on the guitar. So the first thing I recommend is actually taking out a piece of paper and writing out your new tuning on paper, or specifically this string, this D string. If you know the D string pretty well already, then you don't have to do that. But if you have to think about what the D string is as you're playing to know where those notes are, I would put it on paper in front of you so that you can start following off the paper. Whenever you're in a new tuning, it's useful to have that there and then you start trying to remove the paper as much as possible. You have some time with it in front of you, some time away from it, but you don't always have to just try and look at your guitar and stare and work things out. That's a really fast way to being overwhelmed and end up not actually thinking about what the notes are at all and just kind of feeling around for the right notes, which is fine too, but not the goal of today. I think is really useful is if we apply this to a chord progression. So let's take a chord progression that would be easy and open tuning. D, G, and E minor. And I like to say chord progression because then what I want you to do, or I think it's a fun play along at home, is to try and work out or how would those get changed or what could I do to have fun with them in drop D. And this is a class that I did exactly like yesterday with my students because what a great way to start exploring open tuning is to take something you're already able to do and see what happens and the new possibilities in a new tuning. So if we take that and we take our D chord first, well the nice thing with D chords is that we now have this drop D is available. So the key of D becomes really cool because we can always And for the G chord, we've got a couple of options. We could ignore that it's there altogether. We could find the G note and then play it. Or we could leave the D in the bass because the D note is in a G chord. And then for the E minor chord, we can take the shape we already know, E minor down here, and then put a finger on the E note, which is gonna be fret two now, and then play it on the guitar. So the principle here for number one is to take shapes you already know and then try and adjust them for the fact that you've now got a note change in that string. And that applies to anywhere on this fretboard. So if we're playing, for instance, our E minor open chord, we go, oh, how could I play that chord but make it sound right? It's an easy way to get your head around the fretboard. So the same works with if I have a bar chord. So if I had a bar chord, I wanted to play an A bar chord. Okay, well, if this note here on string six is two frets up, work. Now I don't want to play the top two strings because I can't, they would normally be barbed, but I can't get my fingers on those, but I can play that. And then a minor bar chord I could actually play. So I can still take any shape that I already know and use it on the guitar. Another really important way of doing that is with power chords, and this is probably the most common way that drop D is used. Now in drop D, this note, the G, 
which would normally be in E, is actually here. So in power chords are actually, we can play with one finger over three strings. So if I put my finger down on fret five, I've got a G note. So I could play my D, G, and E by going fret 12, fret five for the G, and fret two for the E. So, so far we've looked at open chords and adjusting those for how you use the D note in the bass. We've looked at shapes along the fretboard as well. Now, the final thing I want to look at is the importance of knowing strings 2, 3 and 4. And this comes up again and again, it's going to be across several alternate tunings that we're going to use. Is There's lots of alternate tunings where strings 2, 3 and 4 do not change, or change very little compared to the rest of the guitar. Uh, but the rest of the strings do. So if you know how to produce chords just on strings two, three, and four up and down the neck, you will end up being able to play chords pretty easily because all you have to do is learn like bass notes and the string down below, and then what's happening on two, three, four is stays the same. So this is true for not just drop D, drop C, open G tuning, there's all these different tunings where two, three, four stay the same the whole time. So if you can play triads, which are major or minor chords, just using strings two, three, four, you can get a lot of mileage out of this new tuning. So for instance, uh, if I can play my D chord here, my D chord here, Those are all D chords and they can use that D in the bass. So I'm just thinking triad, and then what happens in the bass. Now if I can produce my next chord, we, we set a G chord now. Whatever's happening on my D string, because I know that triad, I can do the same thing because this is a D string here. If it works on this D string, it will always work on that D string. So. minor Alright cool, so that's my advice for trying to learn the fretboard with your drop D string. I hope you enjoyed today's session, if you had a good time hit the subscribe button and hopefully you'll join us. We do lessons every Thursday and Saturday on the YouTube and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers guys.